Hello everybody, this is Dragon here. Welcome to the Dragon's Den. Pull up a seat and select a drink of your choice. Leave everything on the table from coffee, adult beverages, tea, water, iced tea, really anything that you'd like. So go ahead and pick a drink of your choosing. For this episode, and actually for the next four or so, I'm going to be talking about streaming. Now, this could be Twitch streaming, YouTube streaming, that sort of thing about gaming, cooking, topics, all across the board as live streaming has become quite interesting in the last few years. We don't just do it for gaming anymore or for panel discussions, D&D, there's so much more that comes from streaming now. So I'm going to be answering a series of questions and taking you through my journey actually with streaming and how it all started. It's quite an interesting story so I'm hoping you will be interested and you will enjoy this experience and the next few weeks I'm gonna have guests that will be sharing their experiences and their future plans for streaming so it's a very interesting topic and a very interesting thing to do for you know, a little bit of self-promotion a bit, but also to reflect upon it and share a little bit more about yourselves in this kind of lens, basically. So let's begin here. So how did I discover streaming and Twitch in particular, as that's where I've streamed throughout the years since 2014? Yes, yes, 2014. I remember I started with no, 2015, 2014. One of those years because I started streaming Had a Full Boyfriend. Oh, wow. I can't believe that was the first game I streamed. But uh, overall, though, streaming and Twitch. So back in 2013, actually, my friend Luke and I started up this channel. Or an uh, earlier version of this channel, I should say. And we were looking at other routes, potentially, that could you know, enhance viewers and get more subscribers, you know, that typical kind of new channel, how do I become big idea. Wouldn't happen until a year later, in 2014, when I really got active on the Twitter world and the social media platforms, and I discovered this thing called Twitch and this creator at the time, no one's super big oddly enough, not Markiplier, Wade, none of those guys, but uh, this was a content creator. Also pardon the noise in the background, currently recording through a thunderstorm, everything's fine, don't worry about it. I found this content creator though that streamed on this Twitch website and I was like, I have no idea what this is but I'll click on his link because... I've chatted with him a little bit on Twitter, and that was Raptor Salad. And the very first stream I went to back in early 2014 was one where he was joined by two others. And it was kind of weird. I was like, whoa, wait a minute. There's multiple people playing a game live for us to enjoy live instead of, you know, watching a video and leaving it, basically or watching a video and leaving a comment. It was all like in the moment. I was like, this is cool. And the other two streamers that he was with was uh, Big Boomba, uh, who I haven't really kept up with or haven't seen much for a while, but there's some stuff that happened. Um, anyway, and Patrick Static. Yes, the Patrick Static. And it was funny, I do not remember what they were playing at the time but they were really funny, high energy, and it was really entertaining. And I figured, you know what, I'm going to give these other lads a follow, basically, and see more about this Twitch world. And that's kind of how I discovered it, really. It was just, you know, this smaller creator, kind of in the same boat as, you know, my friend and I were in, trying to build a channel and do something with it. And had a following, at least to me at the time, was a following, like, having over 50 subscribers to me was like, what? Crazy! I'm interested in, like, hearing more about this, so, yeah, and then I got into Twitch, and yeah, I found that Pat and Boom uh, streamed quite often, and Raptor a little less often, but it was still entertaining to watch them. 
then you know they played with other people and that's again where I found Wade I figured he because I watched him on YouTube beforehand for a couple of years and then I found that he streamed on Twitch because Pat and him joined together for the first time to play Rust back in 2014 crazy experience and I was like oh my goodness there's so many more people that do this and I, I'm, I'm intrigued. I want to know more, basically. And the rest is history. I quickly met a lot of great friends from Pat's early days as a streamer, as some would put it. Found out that they stream. So these are people that some of you may know, like Crumpler64, uh, Postulator, uh, a few others, of course, that are still streaming to this day. Ninyir, I love saying her name, Ninyir. Uh, and really started to follow a lot of people on Twitch to support them, enjoy being there in a live experience from recording and such. And it was such a fun experience. The conversations you could have while watching someone play a game, amazing experience. And you really felt part of something like you were really making friendships you were really building a community and really just being involved with this idea of being a streamer or playing with a streamer I should say I didn't really stream until a little later after that but it was amazing it was mind-blowing that I could be part of this and then my twitch experience evolved even further not necessarily becoming a mod moderator that is in most convenient means as poor Pat had some things happening like back in 2014 that kind of led to some drama you know as as you do with the internet world there's drama wherever you go and I ended up being a crazy fangirl which you're gonna hear more about that I'm sure later in maybe a few weeks from now as Pat might be a guest and but that fangirl really turned into friendship oddly enough and you know reaching out making sure he was okay during that stuff and then boom we had a friendship <laughs> that was quite unique and really revolved around Minecraft a lot of the time to be honest and being on Vox Populi and all that jazz, really, that's ancient history, I think, at this point, but through all that and realizing somehow, some way that I'd be a good friend, I became a moderator for Pat, and that was about August 2014, so quite early after just discovering it, like six, seven months earlier, I became a moderator. And some of you, my friends out there, and you know, those that have stuck around me for quite some time, even back since 2014, 2015, know that I was a pretty dedicated mod, really wanting to work on that community, still being a fangirl to Pat, like sharing his videos, watching everything he did, liked every video, but really got involved with the moderating part of Twitch. And that was an experience, and I was a mod for about three years, and a moderator from not just Pat, for quite a few other content creators. I still am a moderator for Crumpler, for 64, I still am one for him, which I think he'll be a guest on this series as well, so you can hear more about that probably from him, but yeah, I moderated for him, moderated for Pat, moderated for, oh, he, he goes by a different username now, I haven't really kept in touch but uh, back then it was the major pyre and a few others I really moderated for and really just enjoyed the experience of just getting closer to very unique energetic fun people and then building a community around that it was so remarkable to me and Something about my personality through all that, with how supportive I was, being in the chat, being very present in all of these avenues of Twitch, it was Pat that put this little, like, earworm, this little, like, thing, this little seed in my head saying, you should try streaming. I'm sure you'd have a lot of fun with it. 
And I figured, well, that seems interesting. I don't know if I'm the type of person for this platform, but who knows? Maybe I could give it a try. And I did. But it came out of a different reason. It came out of a unique reason. So my streaming thing didn't just start because I loved games. I wanted to showcase a cool game for you, everyone and be silly with it and have a lot of fun with it and that kind of thing. I actually started streaming to help fundraise money for a new laptop because throughout the years, uh, 2014, 2015, and into 2016 really, like those years, I started off with a MacBook and then one summer I was extremely ill with a nasal drip or some sort of bad whooping cough potentially. It's still unclear what the heck had took me out for like almost an entire summer. But it was during that that I was so sick that I would cough so much that I'd pass out and black out. Unfortunately when those moments happened when I had just taken a sip of coffee and I was about to put the mug down, but then I started, you know, getting, like, starting to cough. And the coffee was still in my hand, and I knocked it and dropped it onto my MacBook. It, and it was not fixable at all at that point. It was going to cost something like $1,500 to repair it. So I ended up just selling it for parts, basically, so they could recycle it and use it for their own purposes, basically, at the Apple Store. And that happened then I had to get a quick temporary laptop but of course very new to this whole gaming world thing and not knowing anything about computer specs I still really don't know anything about computer specs let's be real but that's why I have tech friends and they help me <laughs> uh, knew nothing about it so I just grabbed the cheapest laptop I could find or one that I could relatively afford after a couple paychecks basically and got this temporary laptop that you know started off well I could still play Minecraft, could play a few of the other games I liked back then, you know, Gmod. Oh, mainly in the Minecraft and Gmod now that I think about it. Speed Racers with a couple friends. Uh, Brawlhalla, a few other of those games that I mentioned, of course, in uh, the previous episode. But as the years went on, that laptop stopped really running well, and I found out, actually, from... I believe spam I found out from him that I didn't actually have a proper graphics card in that laptop so over the time of course it made sense that some of these games that required a lot of juice I'll say cuz I'm really not that tech savvy would stop running well and it became pretty bad like I could not run Gmod anymore I couldn't really do overwatch I couldn't I couldn't play a lot of really interesting games, so it became visual novel games and Minecraft, really. Those were the games at that point, and Stardew when it first got released back then. I say back then as if Stardew's been around for years, but I mean it has, so it's a fair point. And then at one point, even Stardew like was a struggle to run, and same with Minecraft. And then that spam guy who is prominent feature in this podcast surprised me and set up a GoFundMe to really help me get a new laptop and it was through that setting up the rewards, the milestones, the incentives, all that very common well-known knowledge these days that I decided you know what I still have a way to run things on my computer Pat put that little seed of maybe I should try streaming myself because I was still doing I was doing YouTube videos as well and he basically sold it like streaming is basically like YouTube videos you just get to entertain people in the moment not in a future time and so I did I started streaming and I played a lot of Hattiful Boyfriends and Stardew Valley where a lot of my merch and shit dragon says comes from is from those streams and those moments Oh boy. Uh, for those that don't know, if you go on Twitter and you do hashtag shit dragon says, you'll see. You'll see what I mean. It's a it's a journey. It's a it's quite a long six, seven year journey, so <laughs> enjoy. 
but that's when I had a lot of fun with it. I my friends came out to these streams. I streamed with them, had a lot of fun, and then suddenly we hit the goal, the GoFundMe goal. That's how I began streaming was for this new laptop to get better stuff basically to stream to record to hang out with friends to play these games and I mean I was in a relationship at the time too and a lot of that was playing games together eventually that all stopped and it just became me watching him play which definitely isn't fun so that's where my streaming actually began was listening to these reasons as to why I should do it from like Patrick and Spam and a few other really close friends at that point then saying, you know what? Let's try it. Let's do it. I've got this GoFundMe that apparently is like a thing and I can save up for a laptop using this. Let's go for it. And boom, that's where a lot of fun things came out of my mouth. Still a lot of fun things come out of my mouth occasionally, but I digress. But yeah, that's how I started. Oddly enough, was with Hattiful Boyfriend and Stardew Valley. Then it became other games, like Overwatch, I was able to do that here and there occasionally with that laptop. And it was quite interesting that that's where I started. And it really took off from there. Like I had a lot of fun entertaining, playing games, creating interesting donation incentives. Like with Stardew Valley, for example, uh, back in, towards the end of 2015 to the mid of 2016 basically so that kind of six month period I ended up fundraising money for a huge really important trip of mine to Mexico where it wasn't really for me at all it was actually a lot of money was being fundraised for this orphanage I'd be volunteering at in Mexico and I had a lot of fun donation incentives that came from that it's like if you donate I'll buy a new animal in Stardew Valley and name it after you, or whatever name you want it to be. Or even like in other games too, uh, if you donate you can select what character I play in Overwatch. And many people love to put characters I wasn't good at playing at that time, like McCree. I am not a good shot at all. And same with Widowmaker, of course, you know, the single shots. I'm not good at those characters, so it was quite entertaining going, guys, come on, someone please donate and like pick a diva because I just I'm not a good not good at being a good shot and just having so much fun with that and that's and then yeah charity became a big part of that streaming experience for those few years there where I fundraised for Able Gamers a couple times I fundraised for St. Jude once and a few other like causes too that I would be fundraising for throughout the years and it's amazing that what goals you were able to hit just that first like $100 benchmark goal for able gamers to raising to 50 one time and then $300 here and there and goodness it was amazing and then that big fundraiser that I did for Mexico had set a pretty lofty goal of 750 because I did my research and it turns out the orphanage I was volunteering at was creating and building a sister orphanage sort of like a sister company sister store uh, like a franchise almost but again not really because it's an orphanage and they needed to hit a certain goal to help get the furniture in place because they had the building at that time but they needed more furniture more supplies staff resources that kind of thing and about 750 Canadian would help them out with a lot of that especially when you converted it to pesos in Mexico so I raised that and then I decided you know I'm gonna be there teaching so I will need some resources to teach and you know live a little comfortably because I would be there for six full weeks so I extended the goal to $1,000 and we hit that just in time before I, before I went basically. And so all that money, so 750 Canadian went right to the orphanage directly to open up that second service basically. And then the 250 went to 
supplies for the other orphanage, other or orphanage, oof, the other orphanage. Uh, so teaching supplies, uh, creating materials, um, bringing in some snacks, some food, those kinds of things, and that's m majority of what that money went to. And it was one of the more humbling experiences I had being there seeing directly where those efforts went to and I remember visiting that sister orphanage at the beginning and they had uh, quite a bit of stuff donated already by the time you know I got there and made contact and all that such but then going back at the end of my trip and just seeing you know having cleaning staff there they had bedrooms uh, fully done up for the kids beds, uh, closets, storage spaces, and a lot of that was done in that six weeks. That's where that donation went directly to. Phenomenal experience, and I... And it came from streaming, which is wild to me that this hobby of mine, this fun little thing I got to do with my friends, could do something like that still blows my mind to this day and even what I'm doing right now with extra life it's just amazing to see that this hobby of yours something that you're interested in and you have so many fond memories of could do something like that amazing and I've really kept up with that throughout the years of streaming I know currently I don't stream right now which I'll, I'll get to to kind of explain that a little bit because there's some ups and downs that led to a lot of current things basically but that was one of my better moments as a streamer as a human being was using streaming for fun and you know occasionally getting some financial assistance because living life is hard that could be a much better worded sentence there but I faced some difficulties in that, those university years especially and People were willing to support through personal means, for charity means. Just really amazing. And I have a lot of gratitude for those that helped out, that supported me and got me where I got to be. Like, I got to go to Mexico because of streaming. Wild. I would have gone on my own. Absolutely. I didn't have to fundraise money additionally for this fun for this orphanage I could I would should have just I could have went volunteered my time taught English built that amazing experience on my own but the fact I got to do more because of a hobby that I enjoyed with friends that supported me I, there's no words to really explain that or describe it even it's been phenomenal really to be part of something so big and that's what streaming really has been for me over the years which leads to some more fun amazing moments I've had so one of my prompts for this video is best streaming moments so obviously fundraising using Stardew Valley for Mexico was big highlight for me a lot of laughs a lot of silliness and that was the time where twitch allowed us to play music and so a lot of fun silly moments where i'd be singing the song and something would happen in the game and i'd be like oh crap and like you get a funny quote from it a lot of those moments were my favorites just having a good time singing along watching people laugh with me instead of you know at me in the chat and just having good conversations about a variety of things such a niche thing i developed basically throughout that throughout those years and then kept up with it and then there was a switch basically so i had the games i used for fundraising then i played a lot of story-based games or visual novel games on stream some of those were one of my better moments where you had a sudden plot twist and it wasn't just you experiencing that plot twist it would be the entire chat and your friends watching it with you and the reactions and the freakouts I still remember some of these to the day like in Cinderella Phenomenon so spoiler if you haven't played that game but 
there's a big plot twist about one of the curses, I think, in the game that I just remember chat going, what? And like freaking out. And one of my friends, as you, had played the game before. So she's like, oh, you got to see this. And all of those like genuine, like in the moment freakouts were so much fun. And that's where you develop the memories that you get from playing games is if you get to share it with someone else, it will stick with you years later, as you can see. So I remember that part of streaming being a lot of fun and a lot of derpy moments too. How to Full Boyfriend has a lot of really good streaming moments from it, especially when we met the bird, the biker bird. Oh, I really am bad with names today. I haven't had enough coffee uh, in my system, but the one bird that had that catchphrase, carve it into your soul, and the first time I read it out with a lot of gusto, like, carve it into your soul. The chat loved it. Uh, it. It became merch as if you click on the design by humans link below, it became a merch for the for me because that phrase was used actually as an outro. Oh my gosh, in old videos that sadly do not exist, but it used to be an outro of mine where I would play the game like thank you guys so much for watching like comment subscribe if you liked what you saw today and remember carve it into your soul yeah and that's how I would end videos so that played a huge part and that came from a stream it didn't come from just recording a game and having people react to it later it came from in the moment live streaming which is something I dearly miss to this day now that I'm not streaming as much or at all really that was a really good moment that carve it into your soul just somehow some way some reason I read it out in that way and it just stuck with people and even to this day like if I'm in a call with a couple of my friends that were there for that moment and we get silly and goofy and they'll bring that up and it's a very fun thing to have as a part of your life still like five what five years later it's so much fun like there's a lot of things that have come from streaming that were like that for me and those were the big three basically uh, the plot twist and Cinderella phenomenon genuine reactions from people watching it then the fundraising streams that were like musical whimsy silly chatty that would help fundraise things for charity and then the carve it into your soul have a full boyfriend moment those are my top those are probably the top three I have there's some definitely other ones where silly drunk night stuff were happening on twitch when you know that wasn't necessarily frowned upon nowadays but uh, so many really fun moments were had streaming and the first time I DM'd so Dungeon Master d d was for a one shot that I streamed as well as an incentive for some charity events. I don't remember which one nowadays, but setting that up was a whole learning experience because you had to find a way. Now, I think I've admitted to this a few times already in this episode, but I'm not very tech savvy. So trying to find the right way to set up, like capture your browser I had like roll 20 on it but then also trying to capture your face and your friends faces that's when my understanding really of all these different scenes and sources that you have on OBS I really evolved my understanding of that hardcore when it came to that first one shot that was chaotically fun uh, a lot of stuff happened between tabaxis and elves and characters got really into it and a lot of fun happened from that and it made me want to do more one shots and more D&D &D and more DMing and well friends years later I'm still heavily into D&D &D. play it at least once a week at least when we can and then I teach D&D &D classes now so that one that one one shot that I streamed for an incentive years ago 
led for me to join other campaigns, other groups, other one shots, other streams even playing D and D. And now has look where that's evolved from playing it, from running it, to being part of many different experiences, participating in streams, to now teaching D and D. What? Uh, it's it's quite a wild uh, realizing that now here in this episode that that's the progression of D&D interest for me. It's crazy to admit out loud. But those are some of the really great moments I've had streaming and I dearly miss it. You have no idea. However, life happens and, you know, friendships ends, drama happens. And then you lose that kind of really key support system that you had throughout the years and it makes it really hard to jump back into it. But hold that thought for a moment. So let's not go into the sad reality of experience just yet. There's some more to talk about here. Such as, I, this is an interesting question. As, you know, there's that very common idea that you know you are your own worst critic and I definitely feel that way about myself for a lot of things throughout my life and streaming is one of them and this next question I have for myself to think about with you all here and ruminate a bit is do you feel like you've made an impact? I say yes and no. Uh, yes in the sense of what I've done you know for charity, giving back, Having that experience in Mexico, moving to the UK as well as part of some fundraising things I needed to do, having that kind of an impact and led to all the experiences I've had, yeah, that's totally made an impact for sure. But if you were to ask me that question as a moderator for, you know, the various friends I've had over the years, I'd say no. I would always used to joke that I'm just part of the picture. I'm not the one driving it, per se. I'm not the one, you know, doing the actual streaming. I'm just part of the community. So I I'm, I had that lens quite often throughout the years. And then I have to pause and think and be like, no, no, no. That was still an impact you had. That was still something positive you were a part of. You really dove into the communities I was a part of. I really dived in, supported them from and from beginning to end, really, of my time being there. Not saying that anyone ended, oof, a little dark phrasing there, but I, I have to, I think back now, you know, 2021, last time I was a moderator was around 2017, fully, like, full time, like, paying attention to streams and really being part of it. Looking back four years further, or four years now into the future, yeah, I guess part of me did have an impact. I made friendships, uh, lasting friendships, not lasting friendships. I've learned a lot about myself through this experience, and you know, it's really weird to say that I've made an impact without actually feeling it. It's a strange place to be. Yeah. Pausing there for a little bit, and I'm not sure what more to add to that, but... In essence, yeah, I feel like I have been an impact. And the more wider sense of, you know, charity, giving back, helping kids, helping others with, you know, the various causes I've done a ch charity streamed for made an impact in that larger than life sense, but also in a personal sense. And I think I've impacted others too, in a way. We'll hear back from a couple of them, potentially, in the next couple weeks here, but it is a hard question to answer for yourself. And I, I do have to say yes, but I'm always very hesitant because I don't like the idea of having an ego, <laughs> per se, and I hope this doesn't come in off that way. It's more of the genuine, like, okay, I have raised money for charity. 
that has a direct impact to someone somewhere out there. That's an impact. I've made a friendships. That's an impact in a way. And I feel like I've made that kind of an impact in that way. Uh, yeah, leave it at that. It's humbling thoughts, I think, at that point. Now, lessons learned from streaming. This is an interesting prompt, a nice transition here. Lessons learned. I learned quite a few things. So number one is to enjoy it. Find a way where you genuinely enjoy what you are doing in front of people. Because if you are playing a game you do not like, and for me, oddly enough, some of you are going to hate me for this, totally fine, I raised my glass of coffee to you, but I did not enjoy streaming The Walking Dead. Now, I think for me it was just, I didn't have a controller or, you know, the typical things gamers had, like controllers, other things that they used to make the gameplay easier to play, to get through, and a keyboard and mouse. And playing The Walking Dead was so difficult, it just got frustrating for me. Like there's a lot of those quick time events where you had to like really go from one letter to the next or one keyboard button to the next to really get through things quicker and it would lead to wrong decisions being made or if you had an intended one that you wanted to go for and you clicked wrong, you know, it was, I really frustrated, I was really frustrated with that game and streaming it was just no fun anymore. So I got to a point where some of you may know this game really really well back in like The Walking Dead season one I guess or the first game however you want to phrase it. Uh, there's that sequence where you are the main character uh, Lee and you have to escape a zombie from the back end of a pickup truck and I, to this day I still cannot use the keyboard well enough to actually get past that scene. Every single time I play that, I get bit or, you know, game over, like you died kind of thing, like in Dark Souls. To this day, I still can't get past that. So that was a game I was really frustrated with. I couldn't get through it. And I mean, I love my friends. They were trying to help me with it and, you know, getting me prepared. But I just, for some reason, couldn't get through that. Very frustrating experience. Same goes for Undertale. Love the game. Loved all the playthroughs I've seen of it. People who've played it live. Love that game to bits. Playing it myself cannot beat Undyne for the life of me. This also goes to the whole theme I had for earlier in the channel, uh, earlier videos, earlier iterations of YouTube, where my theme was, I'm not good at games. And I really led that into streaming and every time I came to the Undyne fight, I couldn't do it. Couldn't beat it, couldn't beat her, couldn't get through the sequence, the fights, both, um, you know, the bad root and good roots. So pacifists and the opposite of a pacifist. Words are not really great today. I apologize. But, you know, both runs, no matter which way I took it, I could not get through her. And so when it came to that, you know, you had friends encouraging you, like, keep playing, keep trying, you can do it. We want to see you do it. Eventually, you're just going to have to say, no, I will do it on my own. Maybe if I can record it while I'm trying and I can post me finally beating it, I will do it. But when you are live streaming that, you feel the audience watching you and expecting and having that anticipation, yet having that dashed every single time because you just couldn't do it. Not a fun experience for all. The streamers getting frustrated, audience getting frustrated. That's the moment where you go, no. So really you have to enjoy what you're doing and stream it. That's where my shift in streaming went from, why am I playing these games that are making me mad? <laughs> like Overwatch, uh, Undertale, The Walking Dead. Let's play something I really enjoy. And that's where, you know, games came out like uh, My Secret Pets came and Have a Full Boyfriend, Stardew Valley. And a lot of other little quirky games, Mimpy and some of these others that were really, really silly because I enjoyed them. They were lighthearted, they were fun, 
they were wholesome. Uh, you know, I really, really enjoyed it. So that's my first lesson learned. Stream what you love. Stream what you do. I know that's for growth on Twitch and such. Technically, if you can get your hands on the popular games and stream those, you will get a following. I get that. Totally do. However, I just, I really don't like playing something that makes me uncomfortable, will frustrate me, or make it a bad experience for the people there. So that's my lesson learned. Do what you love. Even if it may not get you anywhere big, people will still enjoy that you are having fun. And that's the whole thing as well. That's the next part to this, is having fun with it. Once you start treating it like a business or if all that you're focused on at the beginning, even though you're quite small maybe to begin with, uh, there's always an argument about what's small and what's big out there. So let's say you're just starting out and you have like two followers, your two friends following you kind of thing. If you are just focused on growth and becoming big, you lose the picture. You lose the fun of it basically. And you, we, you don't want that. You want to really enjoy streaming and having fun. So there's that too. So lesson one, stream what you love, stream what you want, and you will get a following from that. You'll get a community on that. Number two, have fun. Try not to do what you think the world needs you to do on Twitch. Uh, it's your channel. It's your experience. Have fun with it. Really, really enjoy it. It's you'll be surprised at some things that can happen from that. Number three is kind of along these lines as well. Ignore the numbers as much as you can up to a point, of course. Uh, I mean, I've seen Pat grow from this streamer that could barely have ten people in the chat to now how many does he have in a chat nowadays? My goodness, so. Maybe in the beginning, don't focus on the numbers as much. It's really hard to ignore that live number that you see on your Twitch page where you have like one viewer or two viewers or even zero. Very hard to ignore that. And then you see your follower count remain at like 300 forever and ever and ever. And it's not going up, but it's not going down, but it's not going up. The numbers game is a dangerous thing to do because that affects your morale, that affects your motivation to stream, really does dampen a lot what you want to do with it. And that's the lesson I've learned and a reason why I haven't gone back to it, which I'll get to here shortly. So yeah, play what you like to play, have fun, try to ignore the numbers game, and just have fun with it. However, my last lesson here that I've learned is consistency is key. What do I mean by that? You can stream anytime you want, any day you want, once a month. Heck, you go streaming three times a week to once a week. Sure, it's your channel, do what you want with it. But if you really want to focus on building a community and making new friends or meeting new people, one thing that is clear to grow basically as a youtuber streamer this kind of comes to both things content creation uh, any really kind of thing you do or market or create is to be consistent so set up days of the week you like to stream times you like to stream even if it's a range so let's say you are a university student right now oh my goodness hearts out to you i've been there I, I feel your pain with being tossed around between work, school, and doing this streaming thing. I've been there. I feel you. But let's say you posted out on Twitter and on Twitch that I can stream from Monday to Wednesday, anytime between 2 to 4 p.m. I'll let you know on Twitter. That is better than nothing. That is better than nothing. Having a range that is consistent like that will help you. If that's one of your goals, is to build a community, meet new people, make friends, and grow as a streamer, or even YouTuber. Be consistent with it. Uh, 
I never was when it came to streaming. I realize that now. I never ever was. I got lucky with, you know, raids from Pats throughout the years. I got lucky with a couple other raids from other friends like Crumbler and Post. All these other people, Spam even too. Got very, very lucky to where I got basically from that. But I never was consistent. I kind of kicked myself a little bit in the in the shin for that, but I had a very crazy work schedule and life and could never really figure it out. So that's one thing I've learned and something to reflect on and kind of kick myself a little bit for. So those are the four things I learned. Have fun with it. Do what you like to do. So do what you like to do with it. Have fun. Try to ignore the numbers and be consistent because you'll have a really genuinely fun time if you can do those things and hopefully you heard that through my reflection a little bit earlier in this episode I genuinely had fun with it I made friends I had a following I had a little community it was really really good but then I stopped with those things a little bit and that's kind of leading to where this is at now my current attitude and feeling towards streaming so you heard a little bit of it. I began to focus on the numbers uh, for one reason, that I'm not streaming anymore. So that's where my status is. Currently not streaming at all anymore. I might do some for charity things like milestones and such, but I'm currently not streaming anything anymore. And a lot of it has to do with me. I'm not going to put blame on others. I'm not going to put blame on the lack of support. I'm not going to do that. It's it's on me. Because it became about numbers. It became about viewership. It became about those things that took away from my experience. I am one of those people that let it affect me deeply. Because when you press that live button, you at least want someone there, right? To react to things with you, to chat with you, to be with you. And that's the hope, at least, right? When you press that start streaming, you get going, you put on that, like, intro screen music, whatever you have set up for yourself. You wait a little bit, allow the news to get spread uh, through Twitter, Discord, wherever. You wait a little bit, then you begin gaming, and you begin doing what you want to do. And then as you go on, you're hoping that someone will join you and be like, hi, dragon, how are you? Uh, Whoa, you're playing this game? Interesting choice. You're going to be surprised about things, you know? You you want that reaction. And when I restarted streaming in late October last year and a little bit into, like, November, December, and I was in it for a good reason. I really was. Streaming last year was for extra life and fundraising for Extra Life, and having fun, getting back into it. I had a couple reasons why I wanted to do it again. And then it became about numbers, and for me, lack of support, which is a really awful perception to have. And it became all I could think about. I was streaming for two to three hours every once in a while, and just seeing that zero, that zero was killer at one point for me and it got to the point where I stopped having my Twitch page open so I would just stream with the chat popped out so I could ignore like the zero get rid of that completely focus on the game see if anyone would pop up in chats uh, share things about extra life focus on the charity part of it did that for a while hour two hours into the streaming just seen Nightbot with the automated messages pop in every now and then it's so disheartening and I don't want to put anyone away from streaming please don't get that message from here because I have another part of this episode I want to get to here briefly about future plans and such for streaming don't be disheartened it happens you're gonna get mental lows and highs from this experience don't let that be the takeaway from this to quit Please, 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 though, if you are really enjoying it, having a lot of fun with it, and you're not seeing the growth, though, 
don't worry about it. Take some lessons learned here from me and take those lessons with you and apply it to what you would like to do. Please, please, please don't give up. Don't be a me, <laughs> which is an interesting way to put it, but um, that's not the message I'm trying to say. For me personally, I let it affect me mentally, emotionally, and I just stopped because when you let it take over like that, it might be best to stop altogether and take a break. So that's the advice. If you're feeling that low right now with your streaming and Twitch, maybe take a little break, refocus, rethink it out, plan how you want to return, and maybe it'll go a little bit better. Hopefully it'll go better. It probably it will go better. Let's let's be positive about this. It will get better. For me currently, it's just not on the cards. And I'm okay with that. I found the love and passion with YouTube recording and yeah, you know what, let's explain that a little bit. Why streaming why YouTube over streaming? Well, I can sit here, talk to myself, talk to you, and this kind of weird space where you know I'm by myself. There's no chat to focus on. There's no numbers to look at currently right now as I'm recording. I'm recording it. I can upload it and then make sure it looks good on the channel. Uh, I didn't forget to do a thumbnail, which <laughs> sometimes I do. Sorry, Sardy Valley playlist. You're a little hot mess right now. I'll fix you. But, you know, go on there, look at it, and then I can leave it. I don't have to go back and look at the views every single day. I can just upload it, leave it. When I'm ready to upload something else, that's when I check on the views. And that's where I get excited, where I can look at that. Maybe it's not hundreds of views, 10 views, maybe it's not even five views. But if I can see that one person had watched my content, that makes me happy. I'm like, oh, someone besides myself listened to this. Oh, that's exciting. That's, that's really cool. I'm doing something like that, that someone actually wanted to watch this. And I get a sense of joy from that. Whereas streaming, as you've heard, talking for hours, playing a game, really enjoying the game. Most, most of the time, really loving it. But constantly seeing that zero live was so hard. So that's why I switched to focus on YouTube this year. Because it was a healthier way for me to handle it. Healthier way for me to process this idea of not having support in quotations and receiving it from a different way basically the support from another way through you know twitter people sharing it if they share it great if they don't you know i'll bump it see what happens with it it's fine i have a much more healthier way to look at it now so this year has been about youtube and refocusing my idea of what support looks like which is a good transition to now, my future plans of streaming. I would like to get back to it. I'm not gonna lie, I miss it dearly. I would love to have these fun, quirky, crazy experiences again um, with friends and people being there and watching it. Really, really would. However, I'm just not there yet. I have to figure things out. So like I said when it came to well, just a few minutes ago, please don't be discouraged from streaming. If you want to do it and try it, go for it. But have a bit of a plan with it a little bit. What will you do if you hit that point and you feel discouraged? What is your contingent contingency plan for that? When you start feeling low and disappointed about the numbers, what will be your contingency plan for it? Uh, how frequently will you stream? And what will you stream? Start maybe building a plan for it. And that's where I'm currently at is YouTube has been great. I'm refocusing and reevaluating my idea of what support looks like through being consistency with videos on YouTube, uh, uploading weekly at the same time, trying to. Apologies that this episode is late because time did escape me a little bit, but you know, rethinking, refocusing, replanning. And that's currently where I'm at right now. I do want to return in the future. What does that look like right now? I'm not sure. 
it might be a thing where I stream once a month, do a very big special like gaming thing maybe once a month, uh, at the same time every month maybe, and do something like that just to kind of reignite it and see how that goes and how I feel about it, and then slowly maybe increase the frequency and become streaming again. So there's that. I do plan on doing it again. However, it may not be as often as I did before in earlier years. It might be a once a month thing to begin with. Then it could be a twice a month thing. Maybe even once a week. Maybe. I'll see how that goes. But I'm currently in that moment right now where I'm thinking, what do I want to do with it? How often do I want to do with it? And what is my contingency plan for when I hit the lows? When I feel disappointed about certain things, so. And it's good news. I do want to come back to it. This episode made me really realize, really realize? Oof. This episode made me realize that I want to do it again. And for charity, for fun, as a hobby, with friends, I want to do it again. It's just a matter of getting myself prepared to do it and finding a way to manage the unfortunate turn that my streaming experience took. That is kind of where I'm at. That's been my experience so far. I have loved it so much. I dearly miss it and I hope to return back soon. When will that be? Who knows, maybe I'll surprise you all in my birthday month, September, I can come back with a stream and start thinking about things like that, who knows, but uh, I don't think it'll be tomorrow. I don't think I'll be streaming tomorrow, or maybe even in August, I don't think I'm at that point. Maybe September, towards the end of 2021, that might be a goal. Don't hold me to it, you never know, but I... I'm here in this episode saying I'd like to return to it as soon as I'm re prepared and ready to go. Yeah, that's that. So let me know what you think actually uh, about this episode and what your thoughts are about my experience. Uh, some of you will remember back fondly to some of these things that I've done over the years. Some of you will be like, wow, that's you've been through the rainer a little bit when it comes to it. And I haven't been very vulnerable or open about some of the things that have happened throughout the years about losing friends, gaining friends, losing friends. All of that is a factor to some of this as well, but that's for another call, another time. <laughs> that's for another episode. Doing a deep dive on my social life, maybe. But for now, that's my streaming experience, where I'm currently at with it, how much I love it, and I hope you got that sense from this episode. I'm very excited to announce that next week, actually, for the podcast episode, I will have a guest, a dear friend of mine, Lourdes. She will be coming on and answering some of these questions for herself. And we get to hear about her journey with streaming as I participate in one of her streams every week. Oh, so much as we can, really, with D&D. We play Curse of Strahd together. So I look forward to hearing her thoughts and her journey of streaming as I've been to her streams, I've experienced her streams, but it's always interesting to get into the streamer's head a little bit and see where they're at when it comes to it. So I hope you look forward to that. So next week, Lourdes will be my guest, and after her episode, at the end of that episode, I'll reveal my next guest. So stay tuned. We're in a series of videos for the podcast here about streaming and I hope you look forward to it but I live downtown you hear the sirens going off good point to end this video so thank you so much for watching hope you enjoyed your beverage and the stories and I look forward to you talking with Lourdes next week about her streaming experience so thank you so much guys I will see you in the next video take care out there bye